Hi, welcome to the sixth video in the mutual fund series and in this video we will talk about equity mutual funds. The equity mutual funds is perhaps one of the most popular mutual fund categories in terms of retail participation. As the name suggests, equity as a category invests in stocks of listed companies. Equity category packs different investment techniques like growth, value, contrarian, dividend yield, etc. and offer them as a mutual fund scheme in which you can choose to invest. While the investment styles may differ, the general objective when it comes to investing in equity mutual fund remains the same, that is to generate wealth. Over the years, thanks to my profession, I've had the opportunity to discuss about mutual fund investing with several people. I can tell you one thing with confidence. Most people who invest in mutual funds, especially equity mutual funds, invest with wrong set of expectations. Some of them even invest in equity mutual fund as a proxy for direct stock investing. They almost have a trading attitude when it comes to equity mutual funds. Such an approach to investing in mutual funds, especially equity mutual funds, has a disastrous outcome on your funds. Unless an investor gets the expectation right, it's nearly impossible for the investor to generate wealth using mutual funds as a vehicle. Given this, let me share a few common mistakes people do when it comes to investing in mutual funds. Number one in the list is that people invest in equity mutual fund keeping a very short duration in mind. When I say short duration, I'm talking about time period like one or two years. Invest in equity mutual funds only if you can give it sufficient time. And by sufficient time, I mean at least five, eight or ten years. So you may wonder why not invest in mutual funds for short term? Well, markets are volatile and this is the nature of the beast. If you have to deal with volatility, the only way you can do so is by giving it time. You may have heard of the phrase, time heals everything. Well, this is true for volatility as well. The next thing is that people switch between funds very frequently. It's almost like switching tabs on your browser. People switch from fund A to fund B for no real reason. Of course, occasionally there would be valid reasons for you to switch. But unless and until you validate those reasons, there's no point in you switching between two funds. Another common mistake in mutual fund investing is headline investing. Most investors tend to get carried away with newspaper headlines. If the headline says that the market is looking bearish, then wasting no time, investors quickly redeem their mutual funds. I'm guilty of doing this myself way back in 2007, and I still regret doing that. The problem here is not with the fact that you're withdrawing funds. The problem is that you're actually hampering the compounding effect at play. So please do keep these things in mind when you start your investment journey in an equity fund. Moving ahead, let's explore the equity mutual fund universe. I'll share with you a very simple template using which you can analyze any fund. Now before we do that, we need to understand how SEBI classifies a company based on its market capitalization. And this is where SEBI's October 2017 circular comes into play. As per SEBI, if you arrange the companies in order of its market capitalization, then the first 100 companies would be classified as large cap companies. Companies from 101 to 250 are considered as mid cap companies. Companies beyond 250 is considered as small cap companies. Keeping this in mind, let's look at how SEBI circular defines a large cap mutual fund. As per the circular, if an AMC aspires to run a large cap equity scheme, then the fund manager should ensure that 80% of the funds are invested in large cap companies. If the fund manager invests 50% in large cap and another 50% in mid cap, then that's clearly a violation of SEBI circular. So any large cap mutual fund should ensure that 80% of the funds are invested in large cap stocks. Let's validate this by looking at the portfolio of a large cap fund. By the way, you should know AMCs are mandated to declare the portfolio once in every month. So if you're interested to know what is the portfolio composition of a particular fund, please do visit their site and check for the latest declaration. For the sake of this discussion, I've picked DSP's large cap fund called the top 100 fund and see how their portfolio is structured. As you can see, investments in large cap stocks such as HDFC, ICICI, HCL, Axis Bank, etc range between 80 to 100% in this portfolio. And it's in complete compliance with what the SEBI circular states. Now, SEBI circular states 80% should be in large cap stocks. That implies the balance 20% can be across any market capitalization. Anyway, as an exercise, I would encourage you to pick the portfolio of a large cap fund of your choice and see how it's structured. 
and this will be a great learning experience for you. The agenda behind a large cap fund is to ensure there is capital appreciation and at the same time the volatility is reduced. So if you are looking at investing in equity with relatively lower volatility, then a large cap fund may be for you. And at this point, you may wonder how do you actually pick a large cap fund given that there are so many large cap funds out there. We'll talk more about this later in the video series where we will discuss how to analyze an equity mutual fund. Going ahead, let's use the same template to figure out how a mid cap fund is structured. To do that, let's first look at how SEBI classifies a mid cap fund. As per the SEBI circular, SEBI defines a mid cap fund as a fund with a minimum investment of 65% of total assets in mid cap companies. Again, to validate this, I've picked Kotex mid cap fund. They call it the emerging market fund and I'll inspect how the portfolio is structured. Nearly 68.3% of the total asset is invested in mid cap stocks like Cummins India, SKF, Kajaria Ceramics, Supreme Industries, etc. And thus, they ensure that they are fully compliant with SEBI's mandate. 13% is invested in large cap stocks, 11% is invested in small cap stocks, and the rest 7% in other assets. So you get the idea here. Also, intuitively you should know mid cap stocks are riskier than large cap stocks. So if you are investing in a mid cap fund, you should be prepared for a lot more volatility. Again, I do not want to miss this opportunity to emphasize this fact. The only way you can deal with market volatility is to give your investments a lot of time. You can use the same template to see the structure of a small cap fund. Apart from this, we have the large and mid cap fund, which is basically a mixture of both large cap stocks and mid cap stocks. Please use the same template to understand its structure. Multi cap funds is another popular category in equity mutual funds. As the name indicates, the fund manager can invest across different market capitalization. Apart from all these equity funds, another massively popular subcategory in equity is called the ELSS. It stands for Equity Linked Savings Scheme. A ELSS fund is basically an equity fund with a tax advantage to it. Under Section 80C, by investing in an ELS fund, you can save up to 1.5 lakhs. But once you invest in an ELSS fund, you cannot withdraw those funds for the next three years. So in a sense, your investments get locked up for three years. Most people wanting to invest in ELSS fund rush in to invest either in Jan or February of the month because the financial year ends in March. I hope you don't make the same mistake. Firstly, figure out if an ELSS fund is for you. And if the answer is yes, then I would suggest you invest in this fund in a systematic way throughout the year as opposed to investing at the frag end of the financial year. Also, an ELSS fund is not for everyone. Invest in it only if you have a tax advantage. And with that, I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, I'll discuss some basic jargons of debt funds and explore some of its popular subcategories. Do comment and let me know if you have any queries 